Okay, everyone, and welcome to a uh, another video for Chess.com, brought to you by International Master Daniel Wrench. Um, today, I'm going to copy what one of my good friends did, Charles Galoffrey. Um, really liked the live sessions, and I thought that was uh, an intriguing idea, and I really wanted to experience it myself. So, um, what we are going to do is uh, play a live game here. Um, against an opponent that we have been paired with online and uh, should be a pretty tough game and I'm going to do my best to avoid time pressure and, and win this one for you so that uh, maybe maybe it's easier to instruct if I, if I play a game where I actually know what I'm doing and don't just uh, get killed. So anyway, again, welcome, live sessions, and uh, here we go. So my opponent has played d4. Um, I play knight f6. It's pretty much my opening here. Uh, I, I generally play a Nimzo Indian. Um, that would be the uh, most mainline opening I would get. We'll see if he goes into that. Um, but Nimzo players, you know, typically have to complete their repertoire by either playing uh, some sort of Queen's Indian in, in the case that White plays Knight F3 in this position, um, or they have to be prepared to play some sort of Blumenfeld, which is actually what I play. Well, guess what? That's what he did. Um, so if he had played Knight C3, I would have played Bishop B4 and, and played a mainline Nimzo. Um, against Knight F3, I have two main weapons I've played a lot. Um, Actually, three. Well, b6 would be a queen's Indian here um, on move three. c5 is what I'm going to play right now. That should give us a pretty exciting game. Um, I uh, I like the positions that are reached that are, I guess, sort of a Benoni style, but um, this particular move order has the potential to reach a Blumenfeld Gambit, which is what I like. Um, and d5 is also something I've played here, which goes into like a Rogozin. If they play knight c3, I played bishop b4. So um, if you think about what I just described there, you can go back and look at this video again. Um, I believe it's important that you map out your repertoire so that you reach similar structures. One, one of the big mistakes people make is trying to tackle every single opening with a different idea just because they happen to see an opening they like or they see a grandmaster play it. But I think if you if you develop your repertoire where you're reaching similar structures and positions you're familiar with, um, your chances of success are much better, especially as you start playing really good players. Um, so as you see, we saw d5 and I played b5. Instead of d5 um, on move 4, he also could have played g3 or e3, um, leading to pretty much completely different types of positions, um, although I believe black can equalize in both of those lines. Um, pretty easily. In fact, funny note, if he had played e3, again, you can go back. Uh, if on move 4, white had played e3, black can capture on d4 and then play d5 himself, which reaches an isolated queen pawn or a pan-off structure potential. And um, we just did a whole bunch of isolated queen pawn videos now, didn't we? So too bad we didn't get that. That would have been nice to see a live uh, isolated queen pawn session um, just to, I guess, get some practical, some more, more practical analysis, more practical examples. We hope you enjoyed this video demo from chess.com. Subscribe today to finish this video and get unlimited access to our full video library. Your membership also includes access to Chess Mentor, the most advanced interactive training tool available anywhere. You'll also get full access to the Opening Explorer, Tactics Trainer, and much, much more. So sign up today and get serious about improving your game.